What's good, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about how to manage your money if you have a fluctuating income or an inconsistent income, which makes it a lot harder for you to be able to handle or manage your money that's coming in and make sure that you're, you know, getting on task. It might feel like at least it's impossible for you to get on task, but I'm going to give you a very, you know, practical, easy way that you can actually have a way to budget and have a way to get your money under control so that you can start seeing, you know, some change in your money that's available, your free, freed up cash flow. And so that you can, you know, start doing some of the things that you want to do with your money and just reel it in and get it under control. If you don't know me, I'm Will Frazier, your credit and business expert. And I'm here, you know, giving you tips on what you can do to improve your personal credit as well as, you know, business strategies and tips and different funding options for your business and whatnot. So if you like to hear information like that or like this about managing your money and getting your money under control, then make sure you hit the thumbs up to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you'll be notified anytime I drop a new video just like this one. So, you know, again, today we're going to be talking about, you know, how to manage your money, even if it's fluctuating and not consistent on a, you know, day to day, month to month basis. So really, who is this for so that you know that you're in the right place and that this is something that can help you this is going to be for my entrepreneurs out there um you know whatever you categorize yourself as a gig worker so those of you who may be you know doing uber eats who may be um doing lyft uh those of you that may be doing you know stuff like instacart uh you know anything that's a gig related job uh, you might be somebody that, that sells things on fiverr or something like that uh, maybe you're a contractor maybe you're a freelancer you know just doing freelance work and of course in all of these different job titles and other different you know situations it can lead you to have inconsistent income where you don't know exactly you know how much is actually coming in on a month-to-month -month basis or at any given time now i can tell you firsthand i know that when you don't have control over your money situation and you don't know you know when money is coming in it can kind of feel like you know you're throwing away your money sometimes because you don't really know where it's going or you know why is it going away so fast and it could be you know various different scenarios with that it could be because you know you don't know when the next customer is going to pay you or when you're going to find your next customer and then you know you're trying to figure out you know how you're going to pay the bills or it could be that you you know have a long period of time like that where you're trying to figure out where money is going to come from and as soon as you actually get some money you do spend it all because you know you've been waiting for this money to come in or you've had bills that's actually been waiting and calling on you like hey when are you gonna pay us the money and that leads to the situation where you don't know where your money's going and you don't feel like you have control over it so when you're in that situation you know how are you gonna actually reach stability where you can feel like you have that control like you know what's coming in at least to a certain extent and that you can actually make plans for things versus trying to you know wait until money comes and then you try to decide what you're able to do at that point because it's very hard to get ahead when you live life that way it's almost like you're living paycheck to paycheck because you don't know when your next dollar is coming in and you probably don't have any money saved up either so basically the way that i'm going to go over with you to try to reach that stability is going to be something of a updated older method of doing things so you may have heard of a budgeting system that's called the envelope system now if you're unfamiliar with that system i'll go over it really quickly but again it's not going to be exactly that it's going to be a tweaked more updated version of that that you might find a little bit easier to do and you know we'll go over all the steps and practical steps that is for that so basically the envelope system is a system in which you would put your cash you would take out cash and you would put that cash into an envelope but you would have different envelopes for different expenses that you had you would always make sure that you had money put into those individual envelopes and you would only spend what's in that envelope in that particular category without going over because you had a certain amount of cash allotted to that particular envelope or that particular category now the thinking behind that is that you only using cash so you're less likely to want to spend your cash because you can you know see and feel that physical money and it hurts a little bit more 
when you have to give up that physical cash and also because you put the money into a category you know that you can only spend this much in that category and you can see when your money is starting to get low in that category and of course it will make you get a little bit more conscious of how you're spending money and it keeps you from overspending in a particular category forcing you to stick to your budget of course unless you went to another envelope or something like that but the whole strategy is designed for you to not really have to do that now with that being said again it's going to be a similar strategy that we're going to use and this idea is something that i tried to use on my own i actually use this idea that i'm about to give to you on my own in my business and personally so you don't have to actually use this only in your business you can use this in your personal life too and you know even some people that may not be fully in a fluctuating income situation this is something you can try to do too but it should be very useful to those who are in a fluctuating income situation but again you can use this in your business and you can use this personally when i first tried this like some years ago i just came up with the idea to get some accounts and actually you know separate some of my business expenses in those accounts and then you know put money in them based on what i wanted to spend for those accounts but more recently i found out about a book that's called profit first my wife actually introduced it to me and i had no idea that somebody had you know fine-tuned a system like that and it's geared towards business in the book profit first and it's basically a different way of setting up your accounts versus how a business would normally have it set up and it's a system where you open up multiple accounts and in opening up those multiple accounts you will actually you know put certain percentages into each account based on how much you needed to allocate to those categories and it's based off a certain assessment that you do of your business to make sure that your business is operating in a way that you can actually see profit first or actually make sure you're putting profit to the side for your business so that you don't feel like you're broke in your business and still making sure that you cover your expenses without spending too much on expenses like lavish things that you may not need for your business so it kind of helps it's the book is designed to help get a control over those lavish business expenses a lot of business owners try to get especially like fresh out the gate but it helps you to reel all that in and get things under control to make sure you are a profitable and healthy business but anyway that's the book profit first i haven't you know gone into detail about that before on this channel but again this is something to try to help more of my business owners that are out there and if you want me to cover more about what profit first goes into then of course you know leave that down in the comments i'll be glad to go over that and if you've heard of using a system like this before then leave that down in the comments uh, as well because i would like to know you know how many of you guys have already heard of trying to do something like this before but you know we're going to get into some of the practical steps that you want to take in order to implement this in either your business or in your personal life and again this is going to be a little bit altered versus the profit first method and a little bit altered versus the regular envelope method you will see the connections in both if you're familiar with either of them but you know again it's just a little bit different so this is how you want to go about getting this started y'all what you want to do first is you want to go ahead and check your transactions that are from your bank account so you want to go into your bank account you want to look at all of the transactions that have transpired throughout the month and actually you want to do this for quite a few months i would say at least three months the last three months that have just passed to kind of get the best idea of what you're spending money on and what kind of income you have coming in and whatnot and we'll you know dive deeper into that in a minute but you want to check your transactions so that you can see everything that's there now if you have different bank accounts of course you have to you know look at those and again we're going to find a way to try to simplify this stuff as well because it can sound like it's going to be a lot but of course there's a way to simplify everything and you know we're going to kind of talk about that but that's basically foundationally what you want to do look at your transactions from your bank account see what you're spending money on and then you want to categorize all of the similar expenses so you know you want to look at all your income that's coming in and you want to categorize the income that you see you want to look at any food expenses and you want to categorize the food expenses you want to look at your bills and categorize them so basically looking at everything that is a similar type of expense and coming up with a category for what you would want to call that group of items or transactions that you found in your bank account and then next after that what you want to do is you want to find the percentage of each as far as what percentage of all of your expenses do you spend on food? What percentage of all of your expenses do you spend on bills? With the income, it's gonna be a little bit different, but with the expenses, you definitely wanna find percentages to be able to do what we're gonna do in order to try to start getting this 
in control without you feeling like you know you're broke all the time and living paycheck to paycheck now one thing that you can do to make it a little bit simpler to check transactions versus going to your bank account which is going to be you know like a, a list of little items here and there there are some services or some applications that you can use that actually categorize things make it easier for you to categorize things and have a lot of other extra features too so i'm just going to show you those really quickly two options that you can use one of them is going to be a service called mint now mint is made by intuit who you know created TurboTax, quickbooks uh they actually you know own credit karma as well now so basically you're gonna use this application you would link your accounts to it and it would you know give you a very clear way of looking at you know how much money you had to come in how much money you spent you can categorize the different things that you spent money on really easily with this application as well um, they have credit monitoring built in budget planners built in um, and you know it's it's very useful and it can you know help you keep track of when your bills are due and when they're coming up so that you don't miss the payments on them so mint is one of those things that you can use mint is pretty much free so you do get the benefit of not having to pay anything but they do have you know sponsored ads telling you that you you know might qualify for something and of course course they get paid off of that that's why it's free to you but again mint offers a lot but just take note that they you know do have those different offers that you'll see within the app because it is free now we also have an option over here called true bill by rocket so basically with the true bill it is also a similar thing it allows you to do a certain amount of things for free but they have some really great benefits on the paid end and it's really not that much i think the lowest is like three dollars a month or something like that but with this they actually have things that can try to you know get the best rates on your existing bill so they can negotiate for you on your behalf to try to see if you can get your bills lowered certain bills that is they actually have a feature where they will keep track of your um subscriptions that you have and if there are certain subscriptions that you want to try to get rid of they will actually try to reach out to the people that you have subscriptions with and they will try to cancel subscriptions that you may not want on your behalf so you don't have to worry about you know sitting on a customer service line or trying to reach through the chat and try to get them they'll actually do that stuff for you to try to help you cut down on your expenses so even though this app has some free features and some paid features it is really good at trying to help you in regards to getting control of your money as well and again this one is called true bill so what you would want to do is you know take a look at your two options between true bill and budget there are some other options out there these are the two best that i'm aware of so you know i would try to go to one of these routes if you want an easier way to track your money categorize everything and actually get you know little reports you can actually get net worth reporting in this as well so you can put in your assets and stuff like that and check your net worth which is really a determinant of wealth but you know like i said there's some extra features that you have on both sides as well so check those two options out i'm gonna put a link to them in the description so you can try to get to whichever one you feel like might be the best fit for you if you want more information like a review on them please let me know i'll be glad to try to do a review on them to give you some more details on how they can help you in your actual budgeting and money management journey now we're going to take a look at an idea or an example of what you might want to set as your you know your categories and what that actually looks like so what you can do is you can take an excel spreadsheet as you see i did here and you can see on the left side here we have draft categories and then we have condensed categories so right here is going to be your first draft of what it is that you actually are thinking your categories need to be so you know you would take all the dollar amounts um, you would add them up and you would put them over here and then of course you would allot them by categories like right here we have rent mortgage payment um, and we have you know groceries toiletries eating out bills the reason why I have groceries and eating out separated is because eating out can become a very big expense to people and you want to keep that keep track of that separate I feel you know you might feel differently you need to create these categories based on how you spend money and what you think would be good to help you you know get a control over everything but you know I think separating eating out versus groceries is a very good way to make sure that you're trying to limit how much you're spending especially in relation to but with some of these things that you'll see I made sure to include things that people would want to spend money on because with a budget most people don't like to budget because they don't want to 
cut out the things that they like to do or like to spend money on. And, you know, just looking at it from a psychological standpoint, most humans, some type of way, you're going to try to fight against the system, even though you know you're doing this for your own benefit. And you're going to try to go spend money on food. You're going to try to go spend money on, you know, clothes or, you know, something that you probably notice you shouldn't spend money on. So the best thing to do is to budget for it so that you have some money to scratch that itch. But then you don't go overboard with it because you budgeted for it. And, you know, you'll, you'll see that as we go throughout the list. But, you know, all of your bills, uh, you can have an expense for that total of how much you spent on bills. Any subscriptions that you have, you know, total of subscriptions. But because with subscriptions, it's usually going to be something that you might want to cut out. Or that's a good area that you can cut out some subscriptions that you have to save some money. Um, clothing, uh, transportation, you know, like whatever you pay for gas or, you know, if you got to get a battery for your car, if you got to get tires for your car, having some set aside for, you know, transportation needs, which your car insurance and your car note could be included in bills. At least that's how I put it here. Some people may not want to do that. They may want to put their car note and car insurance under transportation as well. But again, you would set this up the way that you feel it would be most beneficial to you. All right. We got here just personal items that you might want to spend money on. So, you know, just, you know, personal things like, you know, if you uh, if you play, you know, video games, you might want to put money to the side for a video game. If you are a person that wants to go get, you know, your hair did or your nails done, you know, you can put that under personal. And, you know, that's just whatever you personally just want to spend your money on. If you have children, you know, several expenses that can come with that. Um, it could be diapers. It could be clothes. If you have older children, it could be, you know, extracurricular activities. It could be, you know, taking them out, you know, getting them toys, different things like that. You know, you can put under your children's budget. You know, you can have a date night. You know, if you're if you're married, you, you might want to go out with your, your wife or your husband and you might want to set aside money for that so that you have money that's dedicated straight for that that you know you can spend uh, without going over budget and still be able to have fun so you know you put that in there if you have debt that you're trying to pay off you can you know put the debt column there and have something to cover your debt that you know that you'll pay every month to try to get yourself out of you know any bad credit situation that you might have where you actually could use to pay off some debt uh, you can have reserves so a certain amount of money that you just want to have just to know that you have money sitting on the side and that you don't have just a, a zero out bank account that you if you know if something happened you don't have any extra money to spend something on something that might have been random that you didn't plan for that you didn't usually spend money on or just to know that you have money sitting there that's what reserves is for and also you know you can have something for like a vacation fund or if you're planning on moving you can have a moving fund all of those things are things you can put into your budget and then of course you want to come down here you want to get the total for all of those items so you can know how much you usually spend on a monthly basis and also how much you're planning to spend on a monthly basis in total and now once you have that number what you can do is you can come over here and you know put something put a formula in that you can divide this by this so you can see how much of your total expenses each of these categories are you can see here rent is the largest uh, expense here rent and mortgage payment uh, bills is the second largest expense uh, groceries you know toiletries is the third and you know things kind of go on from there and you can see how you're spending money what you're really spending money on mostly and you know how you want to spend money because as you're coming up with some of this stuff that you may not be spending money on already you can just you know come over here put a category put an amount that you feel like is uh, what you would want to spend in that category and then and this is all for the month of course and then you know get the total and again check the percentages to see where you're at with that now over here again as i mentioned is a draft so these are a draft of different categories that you might want to have as you know your envelope as the you know old budget method would say or different buckets that you want to spend money on now ideally what you would want to do with this is you want to open up a bank account for each of these categories just like you would have an envelope for each category now i know that might sound like a lot but what you would want to do uh, and i'm going to say something to make this not so much work in just a second but what you want to do is you would want to find a bank that does not charge you monthly fees in order to have a bank account open i believe bb t is one of those banks um, and I know that there are others out there, but you want to find a bank that does not charge you fees for every account that you have open. And that would allow you to open up multiple accounts because the whole point of this being connected to the envelope system is the fact that you want to have your money 
separated in different places that you know you're only spending from that particular account when you're using that type of expense and then again you're budgeting out your money and making sure that you have money for the things that you want to do but that you're not overspending to the point that you're broke now one thing that you're going to want to do because this right here is like 12 different categories so i understand that's a lot of accounts so what you want to do is you would want to come and try to condense those accounts so to condense them which is what these categories are I, as you can see it's the same total it's just different percentages and this one is condensed from 12 down to 8 and of course you can condense it down to whatever you might want to do but by doing something like this you're taking more than one category and you're combining it so you can see here i combined bills and subscriptions because technically subscriptions can be a bill so i just decided to put them together here so that you know it's the same total 2,000 and 200 2200 and you know 21 percent 2 percent 23 percent so it's all still the same amount of money that we want to spend but we're combining some of the categories so that we don't have so many different accounts that you would need to open so right here you can see uh for right here we have parent fund now that included the clothing that included the personal the date night the reserves so all of that is under the parents fund you know for things that the parents may want to do in these different areas so basically all of that was combined into one you get the dollar amount and a percentage there transportation stay the same children i you know kept that the same and as far as debt that's the same so this is something you can do and now you don't have to open up as many accounts based on the categories that you found and it can be less of you know a chore because i know some of you may be thinking i don't really feel like going to open up all those bank accounts and you might feel like there are different ways hey there are different ways of budgeting this is just one way that i'm showing you that might you might see the benefit in it and if you do see the benefit in this and how it can be helpful please leave a comment down below if you think this is completely crazy then feel free to leave a comment down below as well again this is just one of the strategies that you can use that i'm showing you guys here there are different strategies so you don't have to take my advice i'm just giving you some resource you know something that you can try to do to try to help make things a little bit easier for you and now when it comes to these percentages what you're going to do every time you get money to come in one of your accounts is going to be the account that you have that money comes into i would probably you know recommend maybe you use rent mortgage account or that to make sure that the money is going in there and then basically while you have you know all eight of these accounts open you would then go you know say twice a month or you know whenever the frequency you would like to but twice a month might be an easy way to where you're not doing it all the time and that you are giving your money time to pile up and then you just know that you're going to pay for most of this stuff at those times that you actually need to spend the money or you need to transfer the money and you know that's one of the tips that come from the profit first book but basically you're going to take the amount let's say you have a thousand dollars to come into your account uh, on the first of the month so basically a thousand dollars will come into this account right here you know you would just go ahead take 13 percent of that and you would put it in your groceries toiletries you would take five percent of that thousand you would put it in your eating out you would take 23 percent of that money put it in your bills and subscriptions and you know so on and thus forth and you would just do that for each account that you have until you have distributed all the money so basically you know that all of the money that you had was distributed out properly for this and then you can spend money accordingly based on what is available in that account and you can have a debit card for each account so that you can go ahead and you know spend money on this particular debit card you know maybe you can add a color to these systems and maybe you know if you uh, you can get a little sticker like a red sticker and have a, the red sticker on your debit card for your mortgage and your rent payment and that way you know that this is always going to be for rent mortgage and, you know just to make it easier instead of you trying to keep up with all those debit card numbers as well but you know that just gives you an idea of how to possibly manage it if you want to do something like this and again because you don't really know what your income is going to be you know that you're allocating the accurate percentages of what you usually spend on these things you know that you're allocating money towards that stuff so again you can go out or you can buy clothes and you can know you're still going to have money to buy groceries you can know you're still going to have money for subscriptions and you don't have to worry about okay if i just spend all the money that i just got now on this then i won't have money for this you're allocating things to where you can feel comfortable and you can still pay everything that you need to pay so i know this part was the longest part Hopefully you guys are getting that, 
but you know let's continue on with what we have left here and again if you're getting value from this you guys make sure that you hit the thumbs up button so that i can know that you guys are liking this information let's get this video to a thousand likes if you guys really like this so that we can get this shared out to more people who might need to see it as well okay so what about your income so you have that fluctuating income how do you account for it and what do you do to kind of get a grasp and plan you know for what you're going to be having to come in so the basic way that i can tell you to do it if you are a person that has only been in business for a short period of time i would you know hope that you've at least been in business for at least three months and then you can have more accurate information to go off of but basically if you've been in business for you know three plus months um not really that much past that then you want to look at the previous quarter the last three months and you want to get the average for that last quarter so that you can get an average of how much your income might possibly be the coming month and even though it may not be exact and you know you may have an idea that hey i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have less revenue coming in then you can adjust that average down or if you're pretty sure you're gonna have more you can adjust that average up just try not to be overzealous with that and then you know say that you're gonna get more and then you end up not getting that much more and then you have over budgeted and maybe spent more money in more places than you need to be but again those percentages that you're allocating still helps you get more control over whatever comes in now if you have been in business for over 12 months of course you're going to have more accurate information because as you know as the seasons change as different you know holidays come up as different things happen throughout the year it's possible that some months are just slow months some months are more busy months and you can have a more accurate average of what you average over every month throughout the year if you have been in business for more than 12 months so then you can go ahead and take your average for the year and then that can be what your income is going to be that you put down for every month if you have a higher month of course that's great if you have a lower month of course that's not as great but at least you have a solid average number that you can mark to budget to budget how much income you might see in the coming months so even though you might have fluctuating income this is how you can best try to track or manage how much you feel may be coming in based off of the most accurate information you have available to you now also what you want to do for those percentages Let's say that you have, you know, implemented this and you tried it for a little bit of time and you've actually seen that, well, even though I allocated this percentage to this amount, I actually want to spend a little bit less than this because I actually need some more money over here for my bills or because I see that, you know, I'm going to have a car expense coming up soon. So I need to, you know, make an adjustment. So you would want to take a bill that you actually are OK with cutting down. And you want to lower the percentage on that particular account and then make an increase in the category that you need that percentage. Like, let's say, take away three percent from your subscriptions and add that three percent on to your transportation because you know that you have a certain amount that you're going to have to spend on a car so you're going to need to put more money in that area so you know then you can have a way to adjust this and fluctuate it based on what your needs may be while they are changing because of course this isn't something that you're going to be stuck doing it the exact same way you're going to have to make adjustments you know at some times because things might change in your income in your you know expenses you never know what might happen so of course should be open to changes and make adjustments as needed but try to make those adjustments quarterly if you have the option of doing it other than that you know do it as needed now just to summarize what i've shown you guys today and what you need to do to try to implement this system we're going to say again you need to check all of your transactions so that you can be sure that you actually you know what you're actually spending and you know you can get a total on that spending then you want to make sure that you go and categorize all of those groups of transactions that are similar to each other and get the percentages on how much you have spent in those categories then you want to try to condense those categories if you came up with too many because of course you're going to be at the end of the day opening up accounts for each category to make sure that you are correctly you know setting aside money and only spending what is in that particular account again make sure to find an account that does not or a bank that has accounts that does not charge you a monthly fee so you don't have to worry about monthly fees for these accounts and then you're you know you can do this for free the only thing you have to do is just go to the bank 
one time, tell them to set up the accounts, and then after that, you know, you're good to go. You just have to manage the debit cards that you have for each particular account. And with things being digital these days, it's a little bit easier to do that versus having a whole bunch of envelopes with a whole bunch of cash on you, you know, based on what you're about to spend, especially because a lot of people buy things online these days anyway. And also when the money actually comes into your account, you want to distribute that money based on the percentages that you have allotted to each account. Take that money, take the percentage, put it in each account that it's supposed to go. You want to do that maybe twice a month. Try not to do more than that, but you know, you can make adjustments as you see fit for your budget and what you want to do and how you spend money. So basically you have control over that, but try to do it at least twice a month or at most twice a month. And then voila, you have implemented the strategy and make adjustments as you need to make adjustments based on changes to your needs. Now, hopefully you guys found this information useful and valuable and it's something that you might want to implement. If you did enjoy this, make sure you hit the thumbs up to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be notified anytime I put out a video just like this one. I thank you guys for sticking around to the end and I'll see you next time.